The aldehyde functional group has a carbon with a double bond to an oxygen and lone pairs, two lone pairs on the oxygen. So between the lone pairs on the oxygen and the double bond, this is potential for chemical reaction. The carbon also has a hydrogen, and then this aldehyde group is bonded to the rest of the molecule. Carbon in the aldehyde group is always going to be carbon number one. It's either going to be the first or the last in the carbon chain. Now this is the carbon has four bonds, so carbon forms four bonds and oxygen always forms two bonds. And that is shown here in the functional group that this oxygen has two bonds coming out of it and the carbon has a total of one, two, three, four bonds. So when you have the condensed structure, this is the condensed structure which is just CHO, there's an implication that this is a double bond between carbon and oxygen or when it's written as the condensed structure COH, again, you know that carbon has to have four bonds and oxygen has to have two, so that implies there's a double bond between the carbon and oxygen. For this condensed structure, you have the COH is written out with carbon double bond and then hydrogen. And the simplest structure would be to just add another hydrogen to this. So this would be carbon double bond oxygen to the hydrogen and then this other hydrogen. This is the structure of a compound many of you have heard of if you've taken biology and dissected anything is formaldehyde. It has the name ending aldehyde and aldehyde means that there's this functional group, the aldehyde group COH. So this would be the simplest aldehyde would be to just add a hydrogen to the carbon number one or adding the rest of the hydrocarbon chain. So you can add another carbon to this, okay? And so this carbon uh, in the aldehyde group already has four bonds, so one more would be this carbon, and this carbon also needs four bonds, so adding three hydrogens. So this is the condensed structure, CH3COH, of this is a two carbon chain here. Having the name ending aldehyde, formaldehyde, but more commonly is the name ending AL, which indicates that you have an aldehyde functional group, which is this COH. The aldehyde functional group is trigonal planar, where the central atom, the carbon, has three bonds. And so this is because the double bond, when you're considering three-dimensional space, is really just a single bond because it's only going in one direction. This is carbon number one of the carbon chain. So the numbering would continue with the rest of the carbon chain, and this would be one, two, and then so on. The simplest aldehyde is formaldehyde, which is the preservative used in biological specimens. If you've had biology lab and dissected a frog, you know the smell of formaldehyde. It's pretty pungent. It's common of aldehydes that they have smells. Some not so good, but mostly good smells. They are scents and smells in nature, in flowers and spices, like this is cinnamaldehyde, which is in cinnamon. It's responsible for the smell of cinnamon. And so this is a structure that has the benzene ring. So here's the benzene ring on the line angle drawing. And shown in red is the aldehyde functional group. Vanilla is also a scent that is a good scent, and what's responsible for the scent of vanilla is this compound vanillin. Now this is the structure of vanillin, and you can see the aldehyde functional group is here. So this is the line angle drawing. There's no carbon symbol shown here, but the double bond oxygen is shown, as well as that hydrogen. The rest of the molecule has a benzene ring, and this is an, an alcohol group, the OH, and then this is an oxygen bonded to a carbon and another carbon, so this is an ether group. The ketone functional group has a carbon with the double bond oxygen and then lone pairs on that oxygen. So it is the same carbon double bond oxygen that you saw in the aldehyde group, but what's different is that this carbon does not have to be at one end of the molecule. This can be somewhere in the middle of the molecule. 
or in the middle of your carbon chain. It's never going to be carbon number one. At the lowest possible, it would be carbon number two. So it doesn't have to be smack dab in the middle, just like the ether. As long as there's a carbon on either side or the rest of the molecule on either side, this is going to be a ketone. So this is the carbon double bond oxygen that has potential for reaction. So these are reaction sites. This is the condensed formula, which just shows CO. So this is the carbon. When it's written as CO in the condensed structure, it means that you have a double bond to the oxygen, and then there's the rest of the molecule. So the minimum rest of this molecule would be a carbon on either side, not a hydrogen on either side. If it were a hydrogen on this one side, then that would be an aldehyde. So have to have a carbon on either side, and those carbons also need to be filled with four bonds, so that would fill out with hydrogens. This carbon in the functional group here doesn't have to have anything added to it because this carbon has the four bonds with the double bond and then the carbon on either side. Tone group, the CO, is also called a carbonyl group. Ketone functional group is in an organic molecule. The name ending will have O-N-E or the full word ketone. This is the structure of the ketone functional group, which is similar to aldehydes. It's the trigonal planar Vesper shape. So there's a central atom with three bonds. The carbon has to be in the middle of the hydrocarbon chain and the rest of the molecule extends outward. And it can be right in the middle, such as this example, or just anywhere, as long as it's not carbon number one. So this is the simplest ketone, which is acetone. That has one carbon on either side. And acetone, with the name ending O-N-E, here's the ketone group. And acetone has a, a smell that's pretty familiar. So ketones, like aldehydes, are scents and smells. Some Good, some bad. This is an example of carvone. So carvone is the smell of mint. So this is spearmint. And from the name ending of this structure, uh, carvone, O-N-E means that there's a ketone group. So here's the ketone group in that structure. The rest of it is all carbons and hydrogens. There's also an alkene double bond here and one here as well. Ketones also play a role in a pretty popular uh, diet now called the keto diet. So the keto diet is eating a lot of protein and cutting your carbs down to zero. This takes advantage of what happens in the body called ketosis. So ketosis is when the body metabolizes stored fat due to insufficient energy from carbs. So in the keto diet, when there's only protein and no carbs, the body can't burn any carbs and then goes to the fat stores. So there are the acetoacetate and this with its ketone groups and beta-hydroxybutyrate with its ketone groups that are converted to acetone as well as the bonds broken for energy and the energy is used as well as the acetone is then is excreted through urine or breath. Carboxylic acid functional group we've seen before in fatty acids. The structure is carbon double bond oxygen with lone pairs on the oxygen and then another oxygen and hydrogen. So there are also lone pairs on the OH group. Between these lone pairs, this double bond and those lone pairs, these are a lot of reaction sites. This is bonded to the rest of the molecule and this would be in another example like the aldehyde group that this is carbon number one in the carbon chain. This can be extending to the left or the right but this has to be carbon number one. The numbering of the carbon chain has to start in the functional group. Short condensed structure is just to write the COOH. Simplest carboxylic acid group would just be to have a hydrogen um, but the next would be to have the carboxylic acid group, COOH, and then add another carbon. So another carbon with its four bonds, which would be to three other hydrogens. So the carboxylic acid is recognized from the name ending ic acid. We've seen this before in oleic acid, which is in olive oil. 
acetic acid that is in vinegar. So the main ending ic acid means that the carboxylic acid functional group is there. Here's the structure of the carboxylic acid functional group. We can see that this is the trigonal plane or vesper shape. The carbon has three bonds attached to it. We also have the carboxylic acid group as part of this monomer of proteins, amino acids, the COOH group. Name ending ic acid means that this functional group is present. So carboxylic acids are also acids in that they are um, going to have more hydrogen than hydroxide or produce hydrogens when in aqueous solution. So these are all in general, these vinegars contain acetic acid and that acetic acid is a weak acid. The ester functional group has a carbon with a double bond oxygen and lone pairs on the oxygen and then another oxygen which is a single bond and lone pairs on that oxygen. This has bonds on either side. Ester group is similar to the ketone group is that this is somewhere in the middle of your carbon chain and it doesn't have to be smack dab in the middle but it cannot be carbon number one. So this would be the rest of the molecule bonded to either side or at least one carbon bonded to either side. This would be the condensed structural formula would just be to write COO. And one thing about the ester functional group that you should recognize is that there are the two oxygens in that functional group or here in the condensed structure that really stand out. These on a molecular view or space filling would be those oxygens are indicated as red. So you have two reds really close together. So when you see this ester functional group, it really stands out with those two oxygens. And what that means is it's the structure with not single bonds, but one carbon has the double bond to oxygen and one single bond to oxygen. Okay, and then you've got the carbons on either side. So these carbons on either side each have to have four bonds, so they each have three hydrogens in addition to being bonded to the ester functional group. So this would be the simplest ester, which would be one carbon on either side. You'll recognize esters from the name. These name endings are O8, ester or ATE. Esters are similar to aldehydes and ketones in that they're responsible for a lot of good scents and good smells. So esters are really common in nature. So these are structures of esters that are in raspberry, pineapple, pear, apple, and peach, also strawberries. So this is the structure of the ester functional group. You can see that it's the trigonal planar arrangement with three bonds on the central carbon. The ester group is, remember, easy to recognize. You've got two oxygens close together. And this ester functional group, we can see also in the line angle drawing. So this is two oxygens close together, one double bond oxygen, one single bond oxygen. Another thing to notice about all of these esters is the name ending is O-A-T-E. So methyl butanoate, what's responsible for the smell of apples, is an ester or pentyl propanoate the responsible for the smell of peach this is from this ester functional group you can see in all of these structures that the remainder of the group is hydrocarbons so that's just the rest of the line angle drawing the zigzag part are just carbons and hydrogens another ester that is part of the name is polyester so here's a tag on this fabric 100 percent polyester because of the name ending ester, it means that there must be this ester functional group as part of the molecules that